Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome back. August 28th is officially National Red Wine Day, and I was given the rare opportunity to review a wine that comes from a place that I would have never suspected, the Bel Air region of California. That's right close to Hollywood. And it's not every day that I get the chance to open up a $140 bottle of wine, so I thought I would share it with you. So let's check it out. So this here is called Moraga, and that's actually the name of the region where it comes from. Uh, the Moraga Valley is located in the Santa Monica Mountains. Uh, that's near the coast of California, basically two miles away from the Pacific Ocean. Now we all know Bel Air is home to the rich and famous, especially Hollywood movie stars. And in the 1940s and 50s, uh, the famous director Victor Fleming, who directed Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz, owned this property. And he had it for a couple of years before selling it to another owner. And in the 1970s, uh, the second owner decided that the climate here was pretty conducive to growing grapes, so he started to grow his own vineyards. And in 2013, the second owners sold the property once again to a very famous and somewhat polarizing media figure. You may recognize his name, Rupert Murdoch. As I was saying, one of the major reasons why this small microclimate works so well for growing grapes and making wine is because of its proximity to the Pacific Ocean. It's only two miles away. And it's also in the Santa Monica Mountains at about 900 feet above sea level. So the elevation helps to moderate the temperature as well. The property is only 14 acres in size and because of the elevation and also the uh, topography, everything has to be done by hand. A lot of care goes into these wines. It's true boutique production. And also, I guess because of the name that it carries, the reputation, this is where we get the price tag of $140 a bottle. So this is not something you're gonna be opening on most days of the week. I've got some uh, pretty high expectations here, so uh, let's open it up. Wow, look how just dense and intense that color is. So this is a 2017. It's already got seven years of age on it, which is usually pretty good for Cabernet Sauvignon. Most Bordeaux blends do a little better with time in the bottle. Man, it's only been out of the bottle for a couple of minutes and it's just like kind of like jumping out of the glass like a wild horse. <laughs> it's super intense. Uh, everything you would expect from a Cabernet Sauvignon dominant red blend. You're getting a lot of that red currant and cassis in there. Definitely some cedar on the nose, which is telling me a lot of oak aging happened here. Uh, a nice whiff of African violet and even licorice. Ooh wee, that is one intense red wine. The tannins are really strong up on the front. Um, a little grippy too. Silky mouthfeel, really full bodied. I think this is about 15% alcohol by volume, so it's a big wine. Getting a little heat in the mid palate and some spice on the finish too. And then a real slow fade away, long finish with like a warmth in my belly that's just kind of like working its way to my heart and soul. <laughs> So this is your classic Bordeaux style wine, a Cabernet dominant with Merlot and Cab Franc in there. And something this dense and heavy is just screaming out for food. And this time of year, as the seasons are starting to change, we're sort of on the cusp between summer and fall. Uh, you start craving heavier foods. Uh, this would certainly be great with some grilled steaks and grilled red meats. Uh, I would even go game meats too. You can do like lamb, venison, venison chili would probably be amazing. Uh, something with a real savory kind of element to it, a lot of umami. Um, thinking even uh, portobello mushrooms on the grill would be perfect. And if I may be so bold as to suggest it, at the risk of offending some of you wine snobs out there, I would actually pair something like this up with a pepperoni pizza. Yeah, I know that seems counterintuitive at $140 a bottle, but sometimes things are just so far apart from each other that they work. Uh, kind of like a really high-end tuxedo with a pair of Chuck Taylors. At $140 a bottle retail, this is not something you're going to be drinking every day. It's a little bit of a splurge, but definitely worth it, especially since it can probably age for a couple of decades and even get better. I would put it on par with some of your uh, cult caps from Napa Valley, Joseph Phelps Insignia, uh, Camus, Opus One, that caliber of wine. So I hope you enjoyed that brief review. And if you're interested in getting some Moraga, I'll leave a link down below this video where you can buy it for yourself. Now, you may notice that there are two other wines sitting here next to me. These are also made by winemaker Paul Larson. This is his private label here. So we're gonna break those out and we're gonna review those in a separate video if you're interested. Over the past 10 years of educating people on wine, I've actually learned a lot about wine and food pairing. So much so that I decided to create my own wine and food pairing guide. 
which you can download for absolutely free over on my website. I'll leave the link below this video so you can download it for yourself. Okay, thanks so much to Moraga and Sophia for giving me the opportunity to review these wines. I'll see you for the next one. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. Cheers.